Now on. Good evening and welcome to ITV election 2001. In five minutes at 10 o'clock, the polling stations close, the counting begins, and we release our exit poll, the prediction of who has won this election and by how much. We're here at the headquarters of ITV in a specially built studio, and we're poised to bring you clear and exciting coverage of election 2001. So stay with us on ITV for all the drama and the tension of what looks sure to be an historic night. Our goal this election night is to bring you up to the minute coverage of the results as they're declared and the big stories as they break. And we'll be on air non-stop from now until six o'clock tomorrow morning. With me as we follow the twists and turns of the night is ITN's political editor, John Sargent. John and I are on the top floor of our special election set and down there below us is our ITV results center. It's the hub of our operation, packed with computers, analysts, and experts, all processing the results. Mary Nightingale is there to give us regular election updates. ITN's Katie Derham will be travelling down through the country during the programme. She'll leave Edinburgh and then stop off at Manchester and Birmingham before she gets to London. And then there is Dermot Murnahan with an astonishing array of virtual reality graphics. Dermot, give us a sample of what you've got on offer. Yes, Jonathan, I'll be analysing the results as they come in from right across the UK and showing you what they mean. Now, we can pick on any area we like from this map and show you how the voting there is going, or we can take a look at the national picture. This, for instance, how we voted in 1997. Labour there on 43.2%. Wonder how they'll do tonight. Well, that's the broad picture, but on our battleground, we'll be picking out the key constituencies where tonight's election will be won or lost. If these kind of seats start changing hands, we could be in for some real surprises tonight. And as always during elections, there's been an awful lot of talk about swing. Well, on my swingometer, we'll be able to show you the different swings, which will put a smile on Mr. Haig or on Tony Blair's face. And whoever's smiling at the end of the night will have control of this, the all-important House of Commons. Empty at the moment. But as the polls close, we'll be able to show you which parties these 659 MPs belong to. So join me back here throughout the night. We will, Dermot. With just a short time to go before they start counting the votes, meet our election monitor. There you can see some of our cameras out and about right round the country, all at the ready to cover the results as they're declared. There we can see some of the very last people just in time to cast their vote. And tonight, there's particular interest in how many people actually vote. Inside the election halls, the counting staff are waiting for the off. Many of them have held rehearsals to try and ensure that all goes smoothly. And in every counting centre across the land, the stage is set for the formal declaration of the results. We are now just over a minute away from 10 o'clock when the polling stations close and we'll be free to announce the prediction of the result. Now it's going to be a big moment, we're nearly there to take us up to that moment, a 60 second countdown and the most memorable images from the 2001 election campaign. On June the 7th, every vote. I very much believe that we can win because millions of people haven't decided how to vote. We've got the most united party of the three going into this campaign.
It is 10 o'clock, the polling stations have closed, and our prediction is that Labour will return to power with yet another landslide, an unprecedented achievement in British political history and a result which makes Tony Blair the first Prime Minister to have the chance of serving two full terms in office. If our Mori exit poll is right, Labour will have a majority of 175. The Conservatives would only have about 154 MPs, the Liberal Democrats about 58. That's a massive triumph for Labour and a disaster once again for the Conservatives. Our prediction then is that Labour will return with a majority of 175 seats in this Parliament. This is lower by a little than their last majority of 179, but it's close enough to that figure to go either way as the results themselves start to come in. In a few minutes, we'll be going down to our results centre for more detailed background to the exit poll prediction. So we're confident it's a Labour landslide, but at this stage we can't say for certain whether the majority will be smaller or greater than last time. Indeed, got to remind you that exit polls have to be treated with caution. They have been wrong before, and we really will have to wait for the real results before we know the actual outcome. And there is one more key finding from that exit poll. We're predicting a turnout of only 63% in the marginal constituencies, and that means across the nation it could be even lower than that. John, it's an extraordinary result for Labour. It is an amazing result. Now, just because we forecast that Labour would do this, it doesn't remove the astonishing power this has for Labour and for Tony Blair. Margaret Thatcher, eat your heart out. This is far bigger than what Margaret Thatcher achieved. And if you think of what the Tories were saying, let's burst his bubble, let's clip his wings. They've not done that. Tony Blair is in an astonishingly strong position. This is an amazingly good result for Labour. Only downside if our um, exit poll is correct is this dramatic fall in turnout. That is disappointing, and of course that's bound to be partly because people thought they knew the result, and therefore why bother? But it's still depressing in terms of our democracy. And if the exit poll is right, for the Conservative Party, an even worse result than last time. Yes, it must be for them, this terrible body blow. It means they've effectively wasted the last four years in political terms. They're nowhere near getting back into the position where they could regard themselves as in any sense the natural party of government, which they were for so many years. We'll return to a lot of this in 